And uh, we have our missionary to the Philippines, and really he considers this his church. Him and his wife, Ethel, over 30 years have been ministering the gospel in the Philippines. He traveled there with 20 bucks in his pocket and one suitcase and a one-way ticket to the Philippines, not knowing what God had for him there. And uh, he's been there ever since and now travels the world preaching the gospel uh, as well. Like I mentioned, he oversees churches in the Philippines on the island of Mindanao, and uh, they're just reaching people for Jesus, continuing to expand the kingdom. You're going to love the word of the Lord today. It's going to build your faith. It's going to encourage you and bless you. You're going to walk out of this place ready to kick the devil in the behind and start living a great and victorious life. So would you do this? Would you stand to your feet and give the Lord a praise as Mike comes to tell us about Jesus? Come on, Mike, come and minister the word to us today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Don't sit down, let's pray before we take our seats. Father, we thank you for the service today. We thank you for the freedom we have in the spirit to worship you without any hesitation, without any reservation. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom we have in America to gather like this without the fear of oppression, persecution, or worse, as it is for so many of our brethren around the world. But we thank you for the freedoms we enjoy here today. We thank you for the power and presence of the Holy Spirit. We thank you that we will have eyes to see and ears to hear everything from your word today that we need to know in order to leave the service stronger in spirit than when we came in here today and better equipped to represent you in these last days. So we thank you, Lord, in advance for what you will equip us to do and educate us with today through your word in Jesus' name. Everybody that agrees with that said together, amen. Amen. Back up and park. And we're going to get right into the word. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I'd just like to say, I'd just like to first of all, thank you all for your prayers. As Pastor Dan mentioned, this is in our heart, our home church. It has been for quite some time. And uh, whether you may know or may not know, uh, we are in the Philippines doing our work for the Lord. Last summer, we had three mission tours of which members of this church uh, participated in one of those three. And uh, we were able to lead 4,800 souls to Jesus in those three mission tours. 4,800, right on the nose. As well as uh, 1,525 people prayed for when they were sick, and they testified that they received their healing after we laid hands upon them. 1,500, more than 1,500. So... We have a ministry of over 250 churches. We have the Bible school, of course, and we have the crusade work that is the foundation and platform for everything we do. So when you support us with your prayers and finances and just all you do to help us do what we do, you need to know this is an extension of this church and the outreach that God has placed in this house, the vision that God has placed in this visionary leadership team and everybody that's a part of this. And we want to thank you. Uh, Our staff prays for you. We believe for God's best in your life. And we believe that 2018 is going to be the best year you have ever had in Jesus' name. Like with us, like with you. So I believe our future is bright. And we're going to talk about that today from the Word of God because we're right into the new year. We're just a couple weeks into this now. So it's a great time to consolidate our mentality, consolidate our thinking so that we're prepared for the future, that we can be meat for the master's use more than ever before. Anybody with me on that one? Praise God. Okay. So I want to read a few verses with you just to kind of lay a foundation. And I want you to look at these verses and see if you can identify the common thread between the three or four verses we want to read quickly. And then we'll get into the meat of the message here after that. So first of all, and I'm always reading from the New King James, unless otherwise indicated. Start with me at 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Let's go there. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. We'll read this verse, okay? We're going to talk today about the faithfulness of God and how important it is to understand it and to enjoy it and to be blessed by it and to believe in it. Here in 1 Peter 2, 2, it says, As newborn babes... Desire the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So growth is something God wants us to be involved with right from the beginning. It says, as a newborn babe in Christ, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Let's look at uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter number 1, verse number 3. Let's go there. 2 Thessalonians 
Okay, chapter number one and verse number three. It says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. Your faith is to grow exceedingly. God wants your faith to grow. As you desire the sincere milk of the word, you're going to grow, and God wants your faith to grow as a result because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Look at with me Colossians chapter 2, verse number 19. Let's look at that verse. Colossians chapter 2, okay, and let's look at the 19th verse. Let's look at that one. Second chapter and verse number 19. It says, and not holding fast to the head from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from God. So here's another reference to growth. I hope by now you're begin beginning to see the common denominator here. God wants us to grow. He does not want us to remain where we were when we first got saved and discovered the joy of serving Jesus. He wants us to grow and to become more mature, more meat for the master's use, more anointed, with more knowledge to be a game player and a game changer, not just a Sunday morning body in a chair somewhere in somebody's church. Can anybody say amen? We want to be boat rockers and wave makers and shakers and movers. We want to go out there and proclaim the truth. Friends, we are not entertainers. We are proclaimers. We tell the world the way it is. Whether they like it or not, it's the truth. Amen. We're not trying to win friends and influence people. We're trying to get people to a place where they accept Jesus and receive salvation from an eternity lost in hell. That's what we're doing here. That's the game we're playing, if you wish to refer to it that way. Okay, one more. Let's look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 6. Paul writes to Timothy here and he says to him, if you instruct the brethren in these things, you will be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine which you have carefully followed. Nourished with the words of faith. Notice he's talking about growth and nourishment to uh, facilitate the growth. Okay. Physically, if you want to nourish your body, you have to feed it something. You just can't stand around. You have to nourish it in order for that body to grow and to stay healthy. You have to feed it the right kind of food and drink and so forth, you know. You have to nourish your body. Well, we are spirits living in bodies. And in the same way that you nourish your body with the food you eat and the, the beverage you consume and the exercise you, you conduct and all of this, in the way that you take care of your flesh physically, you need to also understand the responsibility to take care of your spirit man and nourish it with the words of faith, from the word of God, desiring the sincere milk of the word, letting your faith grow exceedingly as you continue to nourish your spirit with the words of faith. Now, the reason all of this is so important is because the world is getting darker and darker, but we are supposed to be getting brighter and brighter. Yes. Supposed to be. That is not the way it is in many churches, but it's the way it should be in all churches. But thank God you're in a church where you're uh, sitting under leaders who understand these things and preach an uncompromising word to challenge people and to keep your sword sharp all the way from the day you started to run your race in Jesus until the day you exit planet earth and go on home to heaven to be with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, with all of that in mind, let's go to Psalms number 37. We're going to spend the most of the remaining amount of our time uh, today at that point in scripture in Psalms 37. It's a great psalm, but it has a lot to do with where we're going and the times in which we live. 2018, moving into this new year, we're finished with 2017. The world is a very, very dark place, but the body of Christ is supposed to shine brighter and brighter, and this psalm is going to talk to us on how we should be doing just that. Psalms 37, we're going to start with the first verse. I want to read with you, uh, we're not going to read the whole psalm. It would be obviously too, taking too much time. It's too long for that, but we're going to read from 37, and we'll start with verse 1. We'll read the first seven verses, and then we'll go back and take a look at what we've read, and then we'll pick and choose some verses throughout the psalm from there and see where the Holy Spirit takes us after that, okay? 
Uh, first verse, Psalms 37 and verse 1. <clears throat> Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Verse 2, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and listen, feed on his faithfulness. That's the theme for the message today. Feeding on God's faithfulness. Let's keep reading. Uh, verse number 4, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Verse 6, he shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Verse 7, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings <clears throat> wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret it only causes harm. Verse 9, let's keep reading one more verse. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. And that's right, we're going to inherit the earth. Listen, in these verses we've read, in the first 10 verses that we just looked at, 9 or 10 verses, three times God tells us not to fret. F-R-E-T. Now that's an old word, we don't use it much anymore, but in everyday language, he's telling us not to worry. Three times he tells us not to fret or not to worry. If you go back and look at verse number one, specifically, he tells us in verse one, okay, not to fret because of evildoers or workers of iniquity. See, we're, evildoers are with us until Jesus comes. They're all around us. Workers of iniquity, people who promote sin, promote perversion, promote corruption, dishonesty, sin. They celebrate all of these things. These are the people these verses are referring to. And we are surrounded by people like this everywhere we go. We work with them. We uh, interact with them. These are the evildoers and the workers of iniquity. Okay? They're in politics. They're in finance. They're in sports. They're in all over the place. Okay? Don't fret because of such people. Listen, we live in a world with a lot of evil noise out there that you have to learn to ignore. Okay? Noise from the news media, a.k.a. the propaganda media. Noise from politicians. Noise from financial people. Noise from ungodly people who hate Christians, who hate churches like this, who hate God, who hate Jesus, and who hate Israel. They are everywhere. Don't fret. Don't worry about it. Just let those words they share and those threats they make be like water that runs off the back of the proverbial duck. Don't worry about it. Don't fret about it. They're, they're not going anywhere. They're always going to be here. But we should just learn to ignore all the noise and follow after the word of God. Feed, according to verse 3, feed on God's faithfulness. Faithfulness for what? Well, we're going to get into that in a minute. But see, look at verse 2. Soon they shall be cut down like grass and wither as the green herb. See, these people, they come and they go. They make their threats. People say, well, we're going to wipe out Israel. You know, we're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. I got news. Israel isn't going anywhere. Israel's not going anywhere. The Jews aren't going anywhere. Neither is the body of Christ, by the way, because Jesus said the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So keep talking if you wish to, stupid, but you're just, you know, just letting us all know how ignorant you really are. Never mind those idiots. Praise the Lord. They don't know anything. Just pray for their souls. Pray they grow a brain and accept Jesus. Turn themselves around and praise God. Then we've got another soldier in the army of the Lord to work with. Verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. There's the nourishment. How do you feed your body? You nourish it. How do you feed your spirit? You nourish it. How do you feed it? And with what do you feed it? The faithfulness. The faithfulness. The faithfulness of God. Can anyone say amen? amen. Listen, when I first started out, I was taught the principles of faith. I learned how to walk by faith and not by sight. And I took what I learned and I applied it overseas, as Pastor Dan mentioned. I left the U.S. with 20 bucks in my back pocket and a footlocker, one footlocker with a clothes and a few notes from my Bible school, and a one-way ticket to the Philippines. And from that point, that was September of 1980. 
And we landed there. It was martial law at the time. The, the country was in civil war. There were tanks and guns and <laughs> army soldiers everywhere. And from there to now, we've built this ministry to a, an organization that has more than 250 churches. We've got the Bible school. We teach and train students, and they're out there uh, reproducing our vision, proclaiming Jesus all over the country and even internationally. We've got the crusade ministry that has led over 300 I'm sorry, three quarters of a million people to Jesus. Over 750,000 souls have been saved since from then until now. So I've learned some things. You know, we've made mistakes along the way, but we've learned enough about faith to keep our bills paid and continue heading in the right direction. Okay. But see, the older you get, the more your life and testimony is built not just upon what you know to do, but upon what you've experienced and what you've seen. When you begin to feed, not just on the principles of faith and not just on the word of God, but on the faithfulness of God, because you've seen things, you've experienced things, you've watched God move over and over, time and time again to deliver you, bless you, help you. Maybe the deliverance comes at the last hour, but it always comes. Sooner or later, God always comes through. Amen? Look with me, if you would, verse number seven. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Never mind, never mind these people, okay? They're like the grass of the field that will soon be cut down, the Bible says. Don't worry, they come and they go. He goes on to say in verse number eight, cease from anger, forsake wrath. Don't fret, it only causes harm. I'm learning to do that. You may have discerned by now I'm somewhat of an intense person I listen the business of winning souls is what drives me it is what consumes me and you know when I encounter stupid people that don't know what they're talking about I have a hard time dealing with this perhaps you do too when I turn on the TV and I listen to all of this garbage all the noise out there the anti-Christian rhetoric the anti-Israeli rhetoric all of this stuff it just infuriates me and I can sit there within 27 seconds and I'm throwing shoes at the television set, you know, and, and getting out of my Christian walk with God, you know, saying things I know are not right, blah, blah, blah. We know this. But, but, the, but the point is, listen, you come to a place where you got to cease. You got to do what this verse says. Cease from anger, forsake the wrath. Don't fret about it. God is still God. The word has not changed. The Great Commission has not changed. The vision of this church has not changed. People come, people go, they can huff and they puff, but they cannot blow the church down. They can't blow you down. It ain't happening. No, 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 no. Huh. Look with me if you would. Um, at verse number 25. This is the key verse in the whole song. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to run around the parking lot. I may depart for a few minutes and I'll see you later. But praise the Lord. I'm getting excited here today. All right. Now listen. Listen to this. Verse 25. This is the key verse in the whole song. Because he's writing from a position of experience, not just from head knowledge or even spiritual application, but he has seen things. He says, I have been young and now am old. See, he wrote this as an old man. He's at the end of the parade. He's about ready to step out into eternity. He says, I have been young and now I am old, yet I have not seen, seen, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. See, he's not talking about what he's learned to do. He's talking about what he has seen. He's feeding on God's faithfulness. He's talking about what he's seen God do time and time and time again. Praise the Lord. Look at verse number 35. Go on over to verse 35 or go down to verse 35. What else has he seen? Verse 35, I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself out like a native green tree. Yet, verse 36, he passed away and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought him, but I couldn't find him. I was looking for that clown, but I can't find him anymore. You know, the one that was threatening about shutting down the church, the one that was threatening Israel, the one that was claiming to do this and to do that. Yeah, where were they? Where are they now? I'm looking around for them, but I can't find them anymore. They come and they go. That's what he has seen. I've seen them 
I've been around for 40 years. I got saved on September 21st, 1978. I could take you to where I was sitting on a park bench in downtown Toledo, Ohio, on a, on a park bench along the Maumee River, working for Owens Corning Fiberglass, the big insulation corporation, on my lunch break, reading a little mini book by Kenneth Hagin called The New Birth, which my live-in girlfriend gave me, trying to get me saved. I was a Roman Catholic. I was born and raised in the Roman Catholic Church. I went to Our Lady of Perpetual Deception. I went to her church, you know. That was where I went, okay. And, you know, I, that's all I knew. You know, the sacraments and, you know, the novenas and the can candles and all that stuff. But anyway, that's all I knew. So I thought I was okay. I thought I was cool with God, but she's trying to get me saved. So, you know, she, she went down to the Christian book. She, she didn't know Kenneth Hagin from The Man on the Moon. She picked this little mini book up called The New Birth and threw it at me. Said, here, stupid, read this. You know, our relationship was kind of on the edge at that time. So I took this thing to work and, and read it on my lunch hour. And it just, the conviction of God was all over me. So I canceled my afternoon appointments, went down to the bench, on the, down to the river, on the bench there along the river, and read the book again, read it from cover to cover. It's just a little mini book, a little small thing. You can read it in 15 minutes. And I got saved at about 1.30 in the afternoon on September 21st, 1978. So this coming September 21st, 2018, marks my 40th year in the army of the Lord, my 40th year as a Christian. So I'm on my way. I've seen some things. So don't come along and tell me the word of faith doesn't work. Don't come along and tell me the charismatics don't know what we're doing. You're, you're 40 years too late, Jack. I've already taken my $20, gone overseas, done some things for God. Even, you know, listen, God will even make good with your mistakes. You know, we're all works in progress. Are we not works in progress? We're all on the journey together. We're not perfect people. We make mistakes, but God sees our heart. I can remember one crusade. Uh, with, you know, uh, this was even before, this was, my, this was my BE days, before Ethel, before she came into my life. And we had this crusade, and then, you know, we were preaching, and there was a bunch of blind people there. And we were working with rented equipment at the time. We didn't have our own stuff. I was just starting out, you know, and most of the people that I was working with, volunteers. And uh, I had my interpreter with me. We were just starting to work together. We got into a sink and a flow later on, and we, we were together for years. He was my Timothy. He's in heaven now. But at that time, I just knew the guy. We were just getting to know each other, working together. We're working, we're, we're preaching in a bus terminal with all the buses going by and the dogs barking and the people and the motorcycles and all this, all this ambient noise. And we've got this rented sound equipment, which was built in 1941. The Japanese were using it in World War II. You know, one of those deals. And I, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, it's got reverb and ringing everywhere. We're trying to get a message across to people with all this competition going on. And so the Lord said to me, he said, tell the blind people to, to come up to the front and I'm going to heal them. So I said in the microphone, tell the blind people to come up to the front and we're going to pray with them and God's going to heal them. So the interpreter shared this with the people and blind people came up to the front. There were about 25 of them up in the front. And uh, so uh, the Lord said, now tell them to put a, a um, what do you say, a ball pen I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, I got it. I got it. Tell them to put both hands. That was how he said it. Okay. Tell them to put both hands on their eyes and you pray. And when you pray and they put both hands on their eyes, they will be healed. Tell them that. Tell them to do that. So I said to them to do that. So the interpreter interpreted. But I didn't know the language well enough at that time to know exactly what he said. I thought he said it accurately. But to my amazement, the blind people turned around and started walking away going to all the little stores on the periphery of the meeting. You know, they're just going off, you know, blind people, being led off. And I'm saying to my interpreter, where are they going? He said, well, they're going to, to do what you told them to do. They have to go do what you told them to do. I said, what did you tell them I told them to do? He said, well, you, you, you told them to put a ball pen on their eyes. I said, what? You told them to put a ball pen on their eyes. I didn't say ball pen. I said, both hands, <laughs> not a ball pen. They went off to the store. They're buying big pens. <laughs> They're buying people. And I'm saying, I didn't say ball pen, you idiot. I said, both hands. <laughs> now what are we going to do? So I said to the Lord, now what? He said, well, you know, just let them go buy the pens. So they went off and bought the pens. God is my witness. They came back with the pens. 
Okay, put, I, oh, okay, put the pens on your eyes. I told him, put the pens on your eyes. You ever see blind people do this? Oh. Or this? They were doing these things. And I can just see Jesus in heaven, you know, nudging God the Father and said, yep, yeah, I died for these clowns. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Yeah. Yeah, Jesus, I believe I'm healed. Yeah, Jesus, I believe. And guess what? They got healed. Somebody slap me. I mean, you know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He's not looking for Pastor Perfect or Pastor Perm. He's looking for Brother Available. Thank you, Jesus. I have seen the wicked and great power spreading themselves like native green trees, yet they pass away, and behold, they are no more. Amen. I have seen things. I don't need to run around with wringing my hands hoping God comes through. I've been down and around the block. I've seen God move, and guess what? He's no respecter of persons, and if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. And if he did it for this church then, he'll do it for this church now, and he'll do it for the church going down the road, looking forward, moving forward to the future. Do you know that the church lives day by day here like we do in the Philippines? We don't have some slush fund of cash somewhere that we can dip into for, for emergencies. We live day by day. For 40 years, we've done this. The church does this here. They know what we're talking about. We know what they're talking about. They know what we're talking about. We are not going anywhere. The devil can huff and puff, but he's not taking us out. We have not seen our best days yet. It's all ahead of us. It's all ahead of us. It's all ahead of us. Glory to God. And you're a part of it, see? But if you don't understand these things, then you'll be the liability, the headache that never goes away, the counseling session we wish would never take place. We want to be people who help, people who assist, people who are pulled alongside, amen? Not, you know, you look at the counseling session list today and they see your name and they say, oh my God, they're back again. No, we don't want that. We want you to be boat rockers and wave makers, shakers and movers, amen? People that know how to wield that sword accurately for the Lord Jesus Christ, amen? If you're going, listen, worry is all about the future, you worry about things that don't yet happen or, you know, about what might happen concerning what's happening now. It's all about the future. Never mind any of that. The best way to not worry about the future is to look at the past and remember and to feed on the faithfulness of God. Look with me at Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Thank you, Jesus. Is this helping anybody? Psalms 103. Thank you, Jesus. Psalms 103, verse number 2. Let's look at that. Psalms 103 and verse number 2. Thank you, Jesus. Let's put that up on the screen since my app is not cooperating for the moment. There you go. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Let's keep reading. Let's go on to the next verse. Okay, third verse, I believe. Uh, bless the Lord on my soul and forget not all his benefits. It's my app is not cooperating. He talks about the prosperity, the healing, the blessings that come along. Don't forget these things that God does for you because the same God who did it before is the same God who's going to do it again over and over and over and over. Amen? Feed on the faithfulness of God. Okay? The word of God is always in Christ, yes and amen. Not no or maybe and hope so, take a ticket and I might get back to you later. That's not the way God works. Amen. That's not the way he operates. He's faithful. He's good for his word. The Bible says he watches, excuse me, he watches over his word to, to perform it. His word is his bond. Listen, you're only as good as your word. God's only as good as his word. If his word's no good, he's no good. Okay? So feed on his faithfulness. Don't worry about the future. Don't fret about these things, praise God, because God will take care of us. Can anyone say amen? amen? That's right. Praise the Lord. So we need to understand this. We need to walk in the light of these things, okay? The Bible talks about the fact that in the last days, things are going to get darker and darker and darker. But we in the body of Christ, we need to be growing brighter and brighter and brighter. Amen. So, you know, if you have testimonies, build on those, feed on those. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, people overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That means God has done some things for you. He's done some things for us. Can anyone say amen? amen. 
So I'm not worried about the future. I'm excited about the future. Amen? Amen. Don't fret about the workers of iniquity. Don't fret about any of these people, praise God, because we know that they will all pass away. Don't fret about it. Don't worry about it because the Lord's going to take good care of us. It says in the seventh verse, rest in the Lord in Psalms 37. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Amen. I want to read to you from the, Rome, the book of Romans, I should say, uh, from the King James Version. I want to read to you Romans chapter number 5 as we begin to wrap this up. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. From the King James Version, okay? I like the way it's worded from this particular translation. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. Here's what it says from the King James. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. Okay? Tribulation worketh patience. Patience leads to experience. Experience leads to hope. Experience leads to hope. Hope is future. It all deals with the future. And Hebrews chapter 6 tells us in the 19th verse, that hope is the anchor to your soul. Hope is the anchor to your soul, okay? And hope is all about the future. You see, the tribulation produces patience, the patience produces experience, the experience, the testimony, shall we say, produces hope for the future. If God blessed me then, he'll bless me now. If he healed me then, he'll heal me now. If he came through for me before, he'll come through once again. He will never change. He's not going anywhere. Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. You're never alone. You're never alone. Well, I feel alone. Well, you may feel it, but you're not because he's always there. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. Wherever we go, he goes. Because we're temples of the Holy Spirit. Dwell on this stuff. Meditate on these things. Think this way. And you won't be so worried and angry and upset about the things you see on TV or the things you hear from some politician somewhere or from some, some terrorist. Are you listening? Yes. Now listen, we work, on, we work in Mindanao. Mindanao is an island presently under martial law because of the war that was declared on our island in May of last year, May of 2017, war was declared between the army and the Muslim insurgents 60 miles from our compound, 60 miles away from where we live and work and breathe and move for God in Osama City in the Philippines. Now, I am a commissioned officer in the Philippine army. So is my wife. I hold the rank of colonel. She holds the rank of lieutenant colonel. God has opened up all the military bases to us. And we travel the country with sidearms on, armed and ready for whatever comes down the road. But that's the world in which we live. Okay, we know God takes care of us. We go, people always tell us, don't go here, don't go there. We've got intelligence reports about the Muslims and the insurgents and, and the terrorists. They're in this area and foreigners like you are, are in danger and your life can be compromised. Hey, if God tells me to go, I'm going. And we go. Well, you better hide in the back of the bus. Oh, contraire, oh, idiot. I'm going to put my trust in God and sit in the front seat with the windshield right there in front of me so everybody can see who I am because I want them to know I serve the Lord God who takes good care of those who put their trust in him. That's the world we live in. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, my wife and I were uh, Googling this last night to get the dates right. July 30th. Our mayor was killed. Our mayor, the mayor of Osama City, two miles from our house, in his compound. They had a big gun battle with the police. The mayor is this mafia figure. He's been running guns and drugs in, in our city for, for decades. And, uh, you know, the new president appointed this police chief who cannot be bribed. He's a Seventh-day Adventist guy. He loves the Lord, goes to church every Saturday, quotes verses, and they couldn't bribe him. So he's trying to, you know, he, they, they try to serve a warrant for illegal arms at the mayor's house at 2.30 in the morning they're met with a volley of gunfire. This big firefight ensues, and the mayor, his wife, his brother, and 15 bodyguards were gunned down by the police. Two miles from my house. Praise the Lord. No more mayor. Bye-bye, mayor. The reason the mayor died was because he tried to throw a hand grenade at the police, and the hand grenade exploded in his hand. This is the world I live in. This is the world we live in. I feed on the faithfulness of God. Are you listening? No matter where you go, no matter what you do, God's going to take care of you. You've got a job to do for God. You're running a race that's not yet finished. 
So don't let the devil huff and puff and try to tell you he can take you out. You tell old Splitfoot, you go somewhere else and lie to somebody else. Because I got news for you, my race has not yet finished, and I'm not going anywhere until God tells me it's time to leave. Can anyone say amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Praise the Lord. I preach myself happy. How about you? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Let's, let's, let's seal the deal. Feed, please. Learn to feed on the faithfulness of the Lord God Almighty who loves you, who sent Jesus to die for you and offers to each one of us the free gift of salvation, the invitation to turn our lives around and accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. Now.